Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of Art Master Studio uh, How to paint a 28mm miniature um, Again this miniature is from a In Her Majesty's Name um, set of miniatures from North Star uh, There will be a link to that in the description below So let's get on with the highlighting uh, so in the uh, first video we did all the undercoating so you can see all the colours I used there so we're going to go straight on with lightening the blue that we used for the waistcoat uh, so that was dark Prussia blue plus black so here it is uh, in this part here so I'm going to use Vallejo London Grey to lighten that up so I'm just going to need a very very small smidge of it just to lighten that that should probably do, but we'll see. Then take your knackered brush that you use for mixing. Never use a good brush for mixing, you'll just uh, knacker it even more quickly. So add a teeny bit of water to it. Yeah, I think that looks like a quite a good step up. Not too dark, not too light. If it is too dark or too light, just uh, add more of the undercoat to it, or if it's too dark, add more of the London grey to lighten it there. So I've repositioned the camera slightly this time, so you've got um, less of my finger getting in the way there, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully you won't get too much of my other hand in the way this time. So basically we're uh, layering on where the cloth is uh, slightly raised, so leaving the darker colour in all the creases and uh, folds of the cloth. Just trying to give it a natural uh, darkness in those areas so this is actually quite um, difficult for me to um, actually see the miniature compared to what I normally um, my normal position because I'm normally slightly closer to the miniature uh, hopefully that won't, won't affect the quality too much. I guess we'll just have to try and take our time slightly more. And I'm hoping that the shine from the light isn't going to be uh, getting in, in the way too much either. I guess we're just experimenting at this stage since it's the first video with a new camera angle. So now the down the back of the waistcoat there is a nice uh, seam that's been sculpted on so we're going to uh, leave that seam uh, in the undercoat colour all the way down the back. So uh, I was thinking of doing a how to paint uh, Napoleonic French, uh, just normal French line infantry, um, perhaps doing a series of videos on Napoleonic um, French and British. Let me know if that's something you'll be uh, interested in seeing. So that's the first highlight on the blue done. Now I'm going to do the first highlight on the white. Uh, I'm going to do this now because um, the colour needs to be lightened and I don't want to leave it too long before it 
uh, dries up. So this time I'm just taking Vallejo off-white. I'm going to add that to um, the light grey. No, not light grey. It's a light mud. Um, if I was doing light grey, it would be exactly the same, just lighting it with the white colour. Uh, add some water to it. So we want it to be uh, somewhere in between the undercoat colour and the second highlight colour, which will be plain off-white on its own. So, uh, yes, yeah, if it's sort of halfway between each, then uh, you've got a good colour there for the triad. Uh, be careful of using too much of a dark colour to undercoat your whites. Um, because they, you probably end up with too much contrast. Um, it's often better to have slightly less contrast when highlighting white. So this is the fun part of painting a miniature, is the highlighting. I tend to find the undercoating to be uh, a bit boring sometimes, um, especially if you're doing like a battalion at a time, or say a group of figures of any kind really. Uh, it's always much more exciting when you get onto the highlighting because that's when the miniature really starts to come to life and you feel like your artistry is starting to um, pay off and it's just a, a lot more fun you can be a lot more creative as to where you put the paint because uh, obviously when you're undercoating it's kind of predetermined that you have to just uh, do a solid layer whereas highlighting it's you know it's obviously a bit more creative than that okay so now moving on to the next color so now I'm going to do the trousers uh, this time I'm going to add some London Grey um, to the dark grey, uh, just to um, alleviate some of the contrast. Uh, you can use London Grey straight over the dark grey, but um, for this I'm just going to have slightly less, slightly less contrast going on. As I said in the previous video, I think this is a very natural looking figure. The pose is uh, very human looking. Uh, the way his shoulders are arched back slightly and relaxed. And uh, the folds in the cloth are very realistic as well. Uh, it's not often that um, you get figures that look like this. Especially when it comes to wargaming. Um, a lot of the time um, figures kind of look a bit more stiff and I suppose like with Napoleonics you've got your specific poses that the uh, men used to have whether you're, you were marching uh, or advancing and you uh, being in your uniform as well can kind of make them look a bit stiff sometimes as um <clears throat> civilian clothing kind of adds to a much more natural look uh, to your miniatures so but I do wonder if um, it's possible to get um, say for example a Napoleonic uh, Brit as natural looking as this figure uh, occasionally I think you do find um, some poses, uh, especially from the Perrys, when you find the soldiers in there relaxed, um, like say they're around a campfire, or um, yeah, they're leaning on their musket or something like that. Sometimes those poses can look 
quite relaxed and quite natural. I suppose it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. The uh, different sculptors have their unique styles. I have to say I'm definitely finding this a bit more difficult to um, to highlight than I normally would uh, with the new camera setup. Maybe it's something I can get used to over time. Um, I definitely think it gives you a much better view of what's going on, uh, much more close up, a uh, much more personal view, but um, the highlighting is not quite as good as I'd normally do but you know it's it's good for the tutorial uh, so let's let's just see how it turns out um, like I said maybe I'll get used to it or maybe I, I need to find a smaller camera I don't know all right so now we just need to highlight um, the hair, the flesh, the wood and the shoes. Uh, we can highlight the shoes nice and quick so let's get that out of the way. This is Vallejo Flat Brown. Okay, that will do. Next we'll highlight the wood. And for that I'm going to use Vallejo Leather Belt. So we're going to give a nice uh, wood grain effect here, just lots of thin wavy lines going lengthways and we'll give this another highlight in the next video. Uh, as with all these colours they will all get a second highlight. You could probably get away with a single highlight, um, especially if you're using more subtle tones single highlight can still be good uh, but I tend to like using the three, three or four layers um, so you know you have some extreme highlights and the uh, highlights and details can really stand out from a distance as well as looking good up close uh, sometimes you get figures that take a really nice up close photo because they're like so subtle uh, but often if you take a photo or you look at the figure from further away because they're so subtle up close they look like a solid colour from further away uh, so you can't see as much of the detail so now we're going to highlight the flesh uh, I'm going to use uh, Vallejo flesh base. Um, I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny bit of the undercoat to it just to make it a little bit more subtle. So, 
before we used uh, Art Deco's Burnt Sienna. I'll just show you mixing that. So I've squeezed a, a little bit out separately here so I can more easily control how much I'm adding, especially with a large um, a large bottle like that. Sometimes it can be uh, easy to squeeze more out than you actually wanted to. Um, sorry about that, my uh, dog just knocked the bin over. Okay, so that will probably do. So I'm not going to leave too much um, of the uh, undercoat showing. The uh, real uh, highlights will come later on. We're going to try and cover most of the undercoat here, just uh, leaving the real deepest uh, recesses in the undercoat colour. Obviously leave gaps between the fingers. Often flesh can be uh, one of the trickiest parts to get right on a figure. Especially when it comes to faces. So this guy's got nice deep set cheekbones. Uh, well, the the cheekbones are quite prominent. I mean, so the uh, dimples in the cheeks are quite deep. That makes it quite easy to highlight the cheeks there. Oftentimes, a moustache can make it easier to highlight a face as well. It just breaks up the areas a bit more neatly if you get that little bit of chest there okay so I'm gonna leave his lip I'm gonna paint that in a different color later on all right that'll probably do not looking too bad. Um, now it's highlighting the hair and then we'll call this a video. So I'm going to use Vallejo Cavalry Brown. This is kind of a, 
orangey brown, uh, sort of a red orange brown. So basically just highlighting the strands of hair. Sometimes it's good to use a wash or a dry brush on the hair just so <clears throat> you can really get the shadows in between every strand. Okay, there we go. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you liked it, please uh, give us a like. Leave any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you in part three when we finish off this figure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.